We are in South Windsor, Connecticut at the incredible home of Telefunk and Microphones here with Alan Benitash. Alan, thank you so much for having us to talk about old school drum microphones. Right on, Dylan. Thank you guys for coming to hang out. Hey, welcome to the lab. We've been really focused on this period from about 67 to about 69 where studios were kind of shifting over from mono to stereo, but before they'd gone to sort of the full 24 track, right. you know, where it was still the drums were kind of coming out of the jet, more of a jazz tradition, my, you know, two mics, three mics, whatever. Right. And we've been looking very specifically at Stax Records in Memphis and uh, King Records in C Cincinnati, where sure. James Brown did some of his biggest hits. I started out as a drummer first and gradually got into recording over the, over the decades. Started with a lot of hip hop, those, you know, sampling some of the most amazing breakbeats ever. They have sure. a sound, they have a vibe. So the question for me was always, how do you get that sound? And, you know, I'd go on online forums, some of these places where you would hear strong opinions that I wasn't always sure if they were backed up by facts. So you have to have a vintage D12 to record, you know, old school kick drum sounds, or, you know, only D19s are the only mics that anyone should use on the drums. I think microphones are only part of the equation, right? I think when, when you're listening to those classic sounds, you're hearing the tone of the instruments, and then you're hearing the tone of the room too, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. all those things are, I'm sure you've figured out in doing your sampling are part of the equation as well, right? Yeah, well, and also how, you know, the tone of the, the, the instrument, the player, the player's touch. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and then also what other mics were live on what, you know, if, if there was a guitar amp right there that had a mic on it, and right. the piano was right here and it had a mic on it. All that extra ambient bleed was part of the equation from time right. to time. So. Right, right, right. I see behind us it's, oh, there are, there's a bunch of mic stands, it's actually fairly minimal and it's fairly focused, right? It is. We have four microphones total. Four, yeah, four kind of positions. Kick, snare, crush mic, mono overhead. All mixed in mono. Was yeah. that, that was the recipe, right? Yeah. If you were to do this today in modern recording, I would do this exact same thing but I'd maybe put a stereo room mic mm -hmm. out in the room to just give you that a little bit more stereo ambience. But man, this would be awesome. This probably sounds fantastic. Oh, well, we, we'll take you in the control room and show you. The first position we are looking at is the mono overhead. A single microphone over the kit in mono um, may be all you need for your music production, depending on what you're trying to do. And there's no rules. You can use a large diaphragm condenser, you can use a small diaphragm condenser, you can use a dynamic, or you can use a ribbon mic, all for that. I see that you have mic'd up the snare drum in a very unique way. <laughs> Honestly, that's pretty rad. So you, so it looks like we're miking up the side of the snare. I would guess that we're getting a ton of body, ton mm -hmm. of crack, right? Mm -hmm. Ton of snap punch. out of that punch. Yep. Do it. Yep. Moving on to the kick drum, and we I, I specifically brought a set of drums that, it's a modern set for the most part, but it's kind of set up in a vintage vibe. There's no hole in the kick drum head. You know, I, I'm, we're not trying to go for a, you know, super direct, punchy 80s or current sound. This is a, a sealed front end, right? So we're not gonna get a ton of punch. We're not gonna get a ton of that slap. Um, we're gonna, just gonna go with a lot of body and you need to know how to control that in your mix.
The final mic position we wanted to look at is what we call the kit center, kind of the kit crush. Uh, I've heard it called the burst mic, uh, which is just a mic squarely in the middle of the kit, just kind of in between the shells of the four drums. And it really captures kind of the punch of the drums, some of the excitement of the drums, and, and minimali minimali minimizes cymbal bleed. Alan, it's been a real pleasure being up here. Right the on. space is amazing, the studio is amazing, the microphones are amazing, and it, it's just really cool to see that you can get amazing, really cool, really vibey, vintage kind of sounds with brand new microphones that you guys are making here in Connecticut. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.